Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, and welcome once again to the Self-Improvement Basis for Community Development Talk Show. I'm your weekly host, Brother James Muhammad, and this week on the show, I'm happy to have on the show General Hafisa. Good afternoon, sister. Hey, good afternoon. And welcome to the show. Thank this, you for having me. This afternoon, brothers and sisters, we'd like to discuss a premarital workbook. And before our sister uh, gives us the definition of this premarital workbook, first of all, sister, General Hafisa, <laughs> the relationship guru. Yeah. Why the name General? I get that a lot, actually, but I got the name General mm -hmm. from Les Brown. When I went to California uh, about 10 years ago, I went and studied under him as a motivational speaker. Okay. And uh, he had a number of people that he was working with at the time. And as you know, a general is kind of the person who's the commander in chief. Mm -hmm. And they set the plan and move out. He just thought that my personality was like that. So he kind of named me after that, and it stuck. And I've been using it as a business name ever since. Okay, I kind of like that. <laughs> now, a relationship work set. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we need a relationship uh, work set for male and female? Oh, I've, well, uh, I, it's the first of its kind, actually. I mean, I developed it because I realized that we don't have a tool when people are in courtship or dating or getting to know one another. They don't actually have a very good tool or a litmus test to kind of judge the person by. So when you're courting with someone, when you're talking with someone, you ask questions, but you don't remember the answers. So a lot of times uh, it just slips your mind. So I developed a tool so that you can write things out. And actually, uh, by it being a two book set, mm -hmm. and a his and a hers, uh, then he can take the book, write the answers out to these questions that are essential, and she can do the same. And then they can trade the book with one another. Mm -hmm. And then kind of sit in the comfort of their home and read what this person has to say about various subjects. So. Okay, then now, that sounds good. Sounds like it would increase the communication between those who are in courtship also. Absolutely. It's something that, it's a tool. It's, it's just a tool. Because when you're in courtship, you're sitting across from that person, and you're asking questions, and sometimes just the ambiance and the aura might affect. Or somebody might change their answer based on what they see in your face as a response. Okay. Um, you might be asking me a question, for instance, and as I start to answer, I see that displeasure in your eyes. So then right then and there, I change my answer. Okay. So what the book does, it, it takes that away. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to sit down, write these answers out to these questions, think about it, you know, and you're putting it down. And you don't really have the benefit of that person sitting in front, in front of you, uh, giving you sort of the answer that they want to receive. Okay. Now, how did you come up with this idea? <laughs> well, this is a book that came about based on experience. Okay. This isn't something I read about. Uh, this isn't something I studied about in school and got this degree. I had the on the street degree. I've been married four times. Okay. And trial that's and error, how, huh? <laughs> trial and error. Okay. And I'm telling you, that's how it was developed. From um, learning from my own experiences, things that I should have asked okay. during my courtship uh, that I didn't ask. Uh, you know, a lot of times when people are in courtship and they're, they're talking to one another, they may have some questions that are kind of sensitive. Mm -hmm. But they may be afraid to go into it because they're afraid of the response. And then again, you know how men are. No man wants to have you sitting across from him drilling him like he's on a job interview. Okay. So what the book does is it takes away from him having to do that, she having to ask those questions, and she could just say, look, I didn't answer. It's in the book. You could just, just fill out the book. And so that takes that away. And then there are uh, over 300 questions in there. So I'm sure there are some questions in there that you never even thought about asking. Oh, okay. Now, when you stated, you said four times, I'm reminded of watching Steve Harvey on TV mm -hmm. on Dr. Oz. Mm -hmm. 
and they asked him about his uh, book and what qualified him to uh, write that book. He said, well, I've been married several times. I've right. made the mistakes. Right. Now I'm trying to share with, you, share with you some of my mistakes and errors in the past so you won't have to make the mistake. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes someone been married once, but yet they have a master's degree or PhD in this particular field. Right. Having made the mistakes and errors that you have made that you are willing to share with the people so we won't have to make it mistakes in there right well it's not about making mistakes I mean we all make them right. it's about what you do after you make the mistake if you're going to turn that lemon into lemonade if you're going to learn from that if you're going to help other people benefit from those type of mistakes when you do that it's, it's a tool for your own self-healing okay. you know it helps you heal yourself to have made mistakes to have risen above that and to say well now I find that maybe I need to spread the word about these things that we should do or things that we should not do. So this is not a tool to tell people how to get married. Okay. I can't tell you how to do that. I haven't stayed married long enough. <laughs> I can tell you what not to do though. Okay. I can tell you, I'm, I got a PhD on telling you what not to do or what questions you should ask that I think that had I asked certain questions uh, during my courtship, it would the outcome would have been different. Okay, now let me ask you a quick question. Now, when you were sitting down putting together this workbook, mm -hmm. did you take each relationship that you failed at, or you and him failed at, and analyze it and come up with ideas from those? I mean, you had to reflect back on a lot of hardship and pain? Absolutely. Well, it's there. You know, all of those things are there. And I talk about um, how to work on getting that pain. Mm -hmm. Because whenever you have a relationship and you think it's gonna go on forever and it ends at some point, at some point some realization comes over you, wow, this is over. You know, and you have to go into an acceptance phase. And divorce is goes through the same stages as death. They talk about five stages that you go through in death. And you know, having to do with denial, you know, and anger and all of that and acceptance. You go through all of that in a divorce. So what you do is I had to, you know, go through my mind. And also what I did was I was very open in the book. I put in it what I experienced with each marriage, you know, exactly what I went through, you know, the emotions, the feelings. And then I talked about all four of my marriages very openly in the book and what I thought went wrong. And that's the first part of it, me kind of, you know, coming out and just putting everything out in the open, sharing with you as the audience exactly what went on. Okay. For th those who are just now tuning in to the Self-Improvement Basis for Community Development Talk Show, I'm your weekly host, Brother James Muhammad, and I'm honored to have on the show, Sister Hafisa. We call her the general. She's the guru relationship, and we're talking about a relationship workbook that our sister have originated and developed, excuse me, uh, to help those who are thinking about going into marriage. Mm -hmm. And really, sister, as you was talking, I was thinking, some of us might have been married 20 years, 15 years. Sometimes we need to go back into courtship. Absolutely. Maybe we need to take the book and go off in a separate room and read the book also. What do you think about that? You know, a lot of people think when they see it, because if you don't, if you don't mind if I could pick this up, when they see the cover of it and they see you know, the man and the woman on here, they think to themselves, okay, this is before you say I do. So I'm not getting ready to get married or I'm already married. So what could this do for me? This is not something just for people who are engaged. It's not for people who are just getting ready to get married. Um, this is so full of questions that what I found is that a lot of people were uh, talking to me who had already been married, who had purchased the set, and they said they wanted to play around with it because they wanted to see if after 20 years if there was anything in the workbook set that they didn't know because you think you know your partner. So I had one couple because as you see there's a his and a hers. Okay. So you would take this book and you would give this book to your wife and you would just sit over in the corner and you know take your time and fill it out. And when you trade it and you get your wife's book <laughs> now, and, <laughs> do I need to go off somewhere and read the book by myself? She go off and read my oh, book. Oh yeah, myself? this is not something you do together. <clears throat> okay. This is what you do on your own. You write. You you already know you, so you fill you out. You putting you in here, and uh, she's putting herself in that book. And then she comes to you and say, "Okay, we're done. Here's mine. Here's yours." And she's able to sit and go through and read things about your past, 
She's able to read things about your ideas about money, um, maybe some fantasies, maybe some ideas mm -hmm. that you have for gifts. You know, just like it, it lists what kind of gifts would you want for holidays and things, you know. And a lot of times you might have been for the last 20 years getting that special tie, you know, on a special holiday. And you say, dang, I wish I, but I don't want to hurt her feelings or something. And you can write these type of things out. It goes into, <clears throat> you know, money matters, your past, how you, your, what, what was your relationship with your parents, um, how do you feel about raising children, and then a lot of what ifs in here. So what if this happened, how would you handle it? You know, and you get a chance to really express yourself in that. So I've had people who are married 20 years come back and say, oh my gosh, I had no clue that I didn't know this about my wife. Or, and one time I, I was talking with a couple and it, it asked about your favorites. You know, what's your favorite color? And you know, what's your favorite this and that? And the wife was drilling. She said, well, what is mine? And he, he's like, I don't know. She said, we've been together 10 years and you don't know that. So it's a tool that will really help people, persons who are already married get to know each other even more and persons who are courting who don't really know anything about each other. Uh, we'll really get to know each other because it removes emotion. Okay. And that's what we want to do. We want our relationship not to be just based on emotion because emotion is fleeting. You know, we want actual facts. We want courtship, taking that person to court. And when you go to court, you don't go with hearsay. You go with actual facts. And then, so there's a lot of things in here that are actual facts. And then even ask your opinion about opening up yourself. Okay. You know, is it okay if I get a credit report, you know, um, you know what, so questions like that, when you're in question, you need to know, where's the trust factor? Because the person might say, well, I don't want you to get a credit report on me. Okay, well, now you know where your relationship is because you're planning a wedding and he doesn't want you to have the credit report, but the guy at the bank has your credit your report and other people have your credit report, but your mate for life so those are things that make you say, hmm, that might be a little red flag. Maybe we need to take a little bit more time and develop some trust here. Okay. Brothers and sisters, if you're just now tuning in, this is a hot one. I'm sitting here with <laughs> Sister Hafisa, General Hafisa, uh, the Guru Relationship, and we are discussing a relationship courtship work set. And this is a practical application. Absolutely. You know, if you sit down with someone, you're serious about mm -hmm. uh, courting someone, and you really look you know, wants to get to know that person. I think this is the right road to go down. Also, so on a serious note, when we look at the condition of the community, let's just start here with Memphis, Tennessee, one of the highest divorce rate. Mm -hmm. uh, the marital institution is falling. What do you hope to accomplish with this relationship uh, work set? Well, what I, I'm hoping to accomplish with it is to empower people. You know, I am, I believe in the human family, period. Um, I believe in marriage. And I believe that when you are developing a relationship with someone, you should be willing to lay your cards out on the table. And what the set does is it enables people and it empowers people to be persons of their word. Mm -hmm. Because you're putting your word in writing. You're not just saying it. And then later on, you can come back and say, oh, I didn't say that. He goes, well, wait a minute now. You know, the guy says, now, wait a minute. Uh, on page 36, you did say you could cook. You said, <laughs> uh -oh. you said <laughs> you're right. So, if, you know, you're going in there. You said you could cook. You said how you like to decorate. You said that you, you know, you wanted to do these things. Let's get back on that page that we were on six years ago when we were courting. Because the wonderful thing is, that's why I put it in a case. Now, you know, people are able to go on Amazon and get the book separately, but it's made to be a set. I put it in a set. And, and, and I put it in a case so they can stick it in their bookcase and it'll last 25 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they can go back to it and, and go over what they talk. And then they can see the change and the growth, you know, in their development, uh, in their mental attitude about different and various subjects. There are a lot of subjects covered in that. Okay, to make this therapeutic, so it needs to be an ongoing process. Just don't put the workbook down. Right. And don't pick it up again. Every year you need to go back and 
reanalyze yourself and your relationship. Exactly. And the thing and the way you felt about things. Because as you grow and mature and change, things are gonna change, your ideas are going to change. And you're able to look back uh, somewhat and see where you were there, mm -hmm. where you've come along. Uh, the additional thing that's so important is like I said, there are things that cause divorce. Some of the main things that cause divorce are sex and money. Those are two of the main things when you talk about problems with divorce. And learning your partner's attitude about money is extremely important. Learning your partner's attitude about sex is important. And you don't want to wait till you walk down the aisle or you've gotten into a a marriage where children are involved and what and then you start finding things out that you really should have talked about long before you walk down the aisle so it's important I say this set is for everybody it's for married people to help them to grow closer together with more knowledge about themselves it's for people who are uh, engaged to you know absolutely before they walk down the aisle and it's for single people I mean I say you need to have something before you share any body fluids you need to be talking about these other things because it's real easy to get emotional and you want to get together and then you're, you know, you're swapping body fluids with the kisses and everything else and you really don't have a clue about the person that you're dealing with. So when you sit down, this removes, like I said, the emotion and we're getting very practical and you're learning what you, about the other person. Brothers and sisters, once again, if you're just now tuning in, I'm sitting here with the guru, relationship guru, <laughs> General Hafiza, as we discuss her re relationship work set. And sister, you know, we go back to school for everything else, but we never go back to school for the institution of marriage. Right. And when I look at this uh, package that you have developed, it tells me that one thing we need to do in our relationship that should be a tune-up on a yearly basis mm -hmm. there should be someone that can counsel relation uh, relationships excuse me marriages on a regular basis we just can't take for granted that hey we we've been together 30 years everything's okay you know some people live together just because they don't want to get a voice right you know, you see, might be too costly. Yeah, make too costly. You see, grandparents stay together fifty years, but <laughs> right. forty of those years they was unhappy. Right. They said, "Well, I've already put in twenty well, years. You know, I, might yeah, as well." <laughs> you invested twenty-five years. Why give right. up now? Yeah. How am I gonna start all over again? But they never really commu communicate with one another. The loves love left five years after. Right. They've been together twenty-five years. Mm -hmm. Children gone. So they just exist, and he's doing what he want to do, she's doing what she want to do, but there's no real marriage. Oh, yeah, and we have a lot of that. And so, you know, because sometimes you may have critics that say, well, you've been divorced, you know, two, three, four times. But, you know, I, I tend to ask, are, are you in a happy marriage? Mm -hmm. Because just staying for the sake of staying is not doing anybody any good. You're supposed to marry, your marriage should be happy. And then there's some recommended readings in the book, and, and towards the end, there are some other books that I, I found to be extremely helpful and valuable for for marriages. So I, I you know, steer the people towards those books which have actual exercises mm -hmm. uh, in the book. One is, um, you know, one or two of the books, uh, one is for his and one is for hers, where they have exercises that they can do to kind of bring their marriages together. So that's an excellent thing to do, and okay. that's on that. Now, the public, how have they responded to this work set? Well, once they know about it, they've responded very well. They understand that there is nothing out there like it, nothing. This is the first time ever there is a workbook set for the couples to really work at where they're writing things down. There are other books out there that have questions that you mm -hmm. should ask, but nothing where you really put your hand in down and get in it. You know, and you know that when you really get into it, now you become more involved. And the women have found that it's very helpful to them and it empowers them because it really kind of gets the man involved more. Uh, many times uh, women know that you say, okay, we're going to get married. And if she goes off and she starts doing all the planning for the wedding, and he's like, okay, just what color tux do you want me to wear? And he's not really not put or invested in that ceremony that day. So this kind of helps, because there's a section in there that helps you to identify 
whether or not the two of you are equally yoked. And that's what I found is very important. You have to be equally yoked. And it doesn't, when people think of equally yoked, they just sometimes think of just financial, you know, or sexual. They don't think about value system, whether or not they're equally yoked. And that's what's really going to hold your marriage together for a long period of time. Are your values the same? Do you believe in the same things? Do we want to raise our children the same way? Or are we going to find out when it's time to go to school that we're on two different paths on how we're going to raise the children? Or what about discipline? So those are things that are discussed in there. And like I said, you revisit that over a period of time. Okay, now, when you think about the male and his program, how can you help the man to get his ego out of the way? Because some men might say, hey, I don't, I don't need all this. You know, this is too, too emotional. You know, he don't, he don't want to sit down with a workbook. And I know you've experienced that. Of course. You know, a woman is, come on, let's go, baby, let's do it. But the man, you know, do you find it hard to work uh, with men and trying to get them involved with this work package? Of course. You know, men, <laughs> no, I mean, let's keep it real. Let's be honest. Um, women have no problem usually sitting down, saying, this is how I feel. This is what I think. I want you to fill it out. He's saying he's doing the male thing. Oh, we don't need that. You know, you know, I love you. I, you know, and he's sim he's simplifying it. But I've, I've, when I've done seminars and things, I've been able to explain the value of this tool for him as well. This is not just for the woman. This is for him because he needs to know about his mate and how she feels about things as well. He needs to know how did she feel about her father because how she felt about her father or what relationship she had with her father mm. is going to affect how she feels about you or how she deals with you. She needs to know whether or not there were lots of divorces or whatnot in her family. Okay. She needs to know, he needs to know how she deals with money. You know, is she able to budget money? Uh, or does she feel that money is just for things that feel good? You know, he needs to know that. So the tool is equal because there's no question in that book for the man that is not also in there for the woman. Oh, okay, great. Now, are there any more projects in the working for Sister Hafisa, General? <laughs> yes, actually, um, I found that with the new laws that came out, this is going to blow your mind, with the new laws that came out in, in, in New York, I think recently, with Civil Union, mm -hmm. I actually developed a Civil Union set mm -hmm. called Before You Say I Do Civil Union Set. Um, so this is not just the Before You Say I Do His and Hers, is actually a civil union set because what I'm trying to do is empower people, the human family. What you want is whoever you are in a relationship with, you want to be able to know the truth. You want the honesty to come out. And this is a tool to help the honesty to come out. That's what's very important in any relationship, whether you have a relationship with um, your partner, your spouse, or you have one with your family member or a good close friend. We need honesty to be the main thing. Also in February of 2012, my book is coming out called How to Spot a Player, uh -oh. Secrets Revealed. <laughs> so we have just a short time and that will be out, How to Spot a Player. And I went around and I interviewed um, many, many players mm -hmm. and they revealed their secrets on what, what kind of women they choose, to play on and what uh, some of the things they say, what are some of the things they do, and I found that that's going to be very empowering for women as well. So look for, look soon for how to spot a player. <laughs> <coughs> okay, now sister, in closing, when someone orders this package, what is the first thing they're supposed to do with the package? Well, the first thing they do... And um, what comes with the package? Well, that's a good question. To improve their relationships. Exactly. Well, just like this, you have the two books. Well, now this, like I said, if people just want the core of it, they would go online. They can go online to Amazon.com. They have the books. And it's before you say I do his, before you say I do hers. Okay. But uh, on my website, I put a little bit more extensive package together where if they go on my website, they would get it. Um, and in that package, what happens is, because I believe firmly in Dianetics. Okay. And so there's a, a DVD in there uh, regarding Dianetics because 
I believe that Dianetics is a tool to help people who have suffered uh, mm -hmm. emotionally because of things that have happened in their past, and you bring all of that with you. So I believe in a tool called auditing. And with auditing, and I recommend that everyone be audited before they move forward in a relationship or move forward to be married. So because I so firmly believe in that, I include something about uh, that tool called auditing, All right. which is I think is very valuable psychologically. And then there happens to be a couple of uh, personality tests in here so uh, that will help with the auditing. So there's a couple hundred questions here, and you fill it out, and then when you mail that in, your, re your results come back to you. So you can see how equally yoked there. And I also include uh, a little card here that gives people 30 minutes of free phone consultation with me. So they can both call me as a couple and ask questions or anything they want live with me. So I put together a very comprehensive tool okay. in this package for them to have to hopefully they will get to know each other grow much closer together, or they will decide once and for all, we are not necessarily, you know, maybe we should move on uh, to something okay. else or someone else. <laughs> well, sister, well, thank you for coming to the self improvement My pleasure. Basis. Thank you so much for having me. And we thank you for sharing with us the work. Now, we're going to have you back okay. because this needs to be a uh, series mm. because when we look at the institution of marriage within the, in our community here in Shelby County, we see that it's falling. Right. And any time the self-improvement can help those with a word, and we're willing to move forward on that. Now, this work package, for more information, how can they get in touch with you, sister? Well, they can reach me on www.generalhafisa.com. That's G-E-N-E-R-A-L, as in general, like lieutenant. Okay. Hafisa is eight letters, H-A-F-E-E-Z-A-H. -E -E okay. Or they can call me uh, at 404-441. 7686. All right. Uh, that's actually Atlanta number. Or locally, they can reach me at 901 267 4887. That's 901 267 4887. And they'll be able to call me and I can talk with them about it. Now, I'm going to leave the closing remarks up to you. What advice can you give to those who are in courtship now or planning to go into courtship? Well, those planning to go into courtship, uh, my advice would be this. The emotional part takes care of itself. If you're finding someone and they are rocking your world and making you feel good, then be assured that that's the emotional part. That's okay, that's done. Be practical. Let's get practical and deal with actual facts. Do what you can to uh, obtain a tool such as this to make sure that you are removing the emotional part out and you're dealing with actually sit down with your mate and actually talk about the plans that you have regarding finances and bringing the children up and how they came up you have to get those facts and in there I talk about a long distance courtship I talk about meeting the the parents and the family members and and give kind of tips on things that they should do before they consider actually walking down that aisle aisle and sealing that bond mm -hmm. that they have with one another. Okay, and what about those who are currently married now and might be having problems? Well, it's a good tool because they can, they will have a lot of fun with it. This is not just serious. There are games in the book, there are what the what ifs in the book, and there are favorites in the book, and just learning your partner all over again can be fun. And that will be something that will bring the two of you closer together. Well, thank you, sister. Thank you. I've learned a lot today. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, once again, thank you for tuning in to the Self-Improvement Basis for Community Development Talk Show. We're honored to have on the show, and hopefully she'll be back once again sharing with us the Relationship okay. Workbook, Sister Hafisa, okay. the general, the relationship guru. And sister, I must tell you, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is original. Yes, sir. This is Thank original. You. <laughs> and you'll be back on the Self Improvement Show for a part two of this, brothers and sisters. So stay tuned. Until next week, peace be unto you.